بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آیت اللہ العظما شیخ عبد الکریم حائری یزدی بان ان 1276 سیونٹی سکس آفٹر ہجرا ایٹین ففٹی فائیو اے ڈی ٹو اے پائس پیو ہارٹڈ مین محمد جعفر ان اے اسمال ٹاؤن مہر چرد ہی اسپینڈ سکس ایئرس ان دا کیئر آف ہز کائنڈ مدر He was interested in reading and writing from very early days. Although his father wanted to provide good formal education, but was helpless, as there were no schools in Mehrjir those days. Most of the children helped and worked for their parents in their farms, lands and businesses. Abdul Karim too had a similar fate. This continued until Muhammad Jafar A family relative, an alim, at the first sight, discovered his talent. He offered to be his guardian and with the consent of his parents, brought the young Abdul Karim to Ardakan. Ardakan once was the center of fiqh before it moved to Qum. Abdul Karim spent a few years commuting between Meher Jerd and Ardakan. He stayed at his guardians and visited his parents on the weekends. He lost his father at the age of six. He returned to Mehjird to help accompany his mother. He expressed his desire to continue his education. His mother, a sincere servant and a lover of Ahlul Bayt السلام, willingly accepted and enrolled him at the Hawziya Ilmiya of Yazd. In 1294 after Hijra, 1873 AD, the 18-year-old young lad travels to the Atibbat, Ziyarat of Ma'asumin alayhim as-salam in Iraq, with his mother and stays in Karbala for his higher education. He was inspired by the head of the Hawza Ilmiya of Karbala, Ayatollah Fazil Ardakani. Upon the recommendations and instructions of Ayatollah Fazil Ardakani, he was enrolled at Madrasa Hassan Khan of Karbala. He soon became an important member of this faculty. Upon the instructions of his mentor, he was seconded to the Hawza Ilmiya of Samirra after his two years stay in Karbala. This was the time when Ayatollah Al-Uzma Mirza Yashirazi was recognized as the worldwide marja. Among the greatest ulama and the best of students of Ayatollah al-Uzma, Shaykh Murtaza Ansari, the author of Fara'id al-Usul. This was the time when the Europeans were looting the Arab resources, creating rifts among the Muslims. Among his other mentors was Ayatollah Muhammad Taqi Shirazi, who was also known as Mirza Yudhuvum, Mirza II, renowned for his fatwa against the British Empire. Shaykh Abdul Karim says, When I was studying in Samirra, due to cholera and plague, people were dying in large numbers. A group of ulama came to my ustad, Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Taba Taba'i Fisharaki. There Ayatollah Al-Uzma Muhammad Taqi Shirazi came. The issue of the disaster was brought up. Ayatollah Shirazi said, If I decree, do you think it will be mandatory upon you to abide by? Everyone answered yes. He said, I instruct the Shias of Samirra to recite Ziyarat Ashura for 10 days and to dedicate its reward to Hazrat Narjis Khatun, mother of Imam Al-Asr, Mahdi alayhi salam, so that This affliction is removed from us. People were informed and everyone recited. From the next day, none from among the Shias died. Upon the instructions of his Ustad, 
Ayat Allah Muhammad Hussein Fazil Ardakani, he moved to Samirra. He wrote a recommendation letter to Ayatullah Mujaddid, a title meaning the reviver to Mirza Muhammad Hussein Shirazi, famous for his fatwa of tobacco against the British Empire. He read the recommendation letter and said to young Abdul Karim, I have already admired you. He accommodated this young hard-working Yazdi student in his own house. His mentors in Samir Ra, Ayatullah Ibrahim Mahallati, Ayatullah Muhammad Taqi Shirazi, Shirazi II, Shaheed Shaykh Fazlullah Nuri, Ayatullah Sayyid Muhammad Tabatabai Fisharaki, and Ayatullah Shirazi Buzurg. After the sad demise of Ayatullah Mujaddid, the reviver, Ayatullah Shaykh Abdul Karim Ha'iri, with his mentor Ayatullah Fisharaki moved to Najaf. He benefited from Ayatullah Sayyid Muhammad Kathim Tabatabai, the author of Urwatul Wuthqa in Usul, Ayatullah Muhammad Kathim Khurasani, the author of Kifayatul Usul in Fiqh, and Ayatullah Mirza Hassan Nuri, the author of Mustadrakul Wasail in Ilmul Hadith. Ayatullah Shaykh Abdul Karim Ha'iri was such brilliant in all sciences among all of the students of his mentors that Ayatullah Muhammad Taqi Shirazi referred all of his muqalladeen to follow the fatwa of Ayatullah Shaykh Abdul Karim Ha'iri in all precautions, ihtiyatat. He in one of his ziyarat trip to Karbala notices the decline of the Hawza of Karbala after Ayatullah Fazil Ardakani. He moved to Karbala, revived the Hawza in a very short time and it was here that he was given the title of Ha'iri. Ha'ir in Arabic is a pit where water accumulates. The land of Karbala is known as Ha'ir. 1332 after Hijra, 1910 AD, witnessed height of colonial oppression and riots in Karbala. Upon the invitation of the people of Iraq, Ayatollah Ha'iri moved to Iraq. He served the Hausa al of Iraq for eight years. He then moved to Qum. Imam Khomeini, a young lad of 20 years then, intending to join the Hawza in Isfahan, changed his plans and joined the Hawza of Ayatollah Ha'iri in Iraq and later moved with him to Qum. Qum is one of the largest religious cities in the world. Since the inception of Shias in Iran, it was counted as the hub of Shias. This fame exists even today. Qum, a center of religious ideology, ethics and politics, in brief, a haven of Ahlul Bayt Like Najaf and Karbala after Islam, Qum too after the arrival of the daughter of Imam Musa ibn Ja'far and the existence of her sacred shrine thereafter boosted the exaltedness of this holy city. Qum has a bright history. It was the long desire of many notable noble ulama from among the friends and associates of the Imams alayhim salam the presence of Shaykh Kulaini, Shaykh Saduq, and the arrival of the Alawi Shias increased the importance of the city. The oppressive Abbasis forced the Shias to settle down in the cities of Iran, namely Qom and Kashan. They built mosques and madrasas in these cities to continue propagating the message of Ahlul Bayt The Imams السلام, gave particular attention to Qum and its inhabitants. It was the time when eminent persons like Mullah Sadruddin Shirazi and Faiz Kashani attracted more and more students to the Hawza. With the help from the Safavi monarchs, Faiz Kashani established more schools. Most notable among them are Madrasa Faiziya, Madrasa Mahdi Quli, and Madrasa Mu'miniyya. 1810 AD, after Mirza Yaqummi, the author of Qawaneen, born 1151, who died in 1231 after Hijra, 
the Hausa of Qom had gradually come to a close down. Madrasa Faiziya and Dar al Shafa were inhabited by beggars and were used as storehouses for the nearby businesses. In the winter of 1340 after Hijra, 1922 AD, Ayatollah Ha'iri comes to Qum. This was after spending 37 years in Najaf, Karbala, Samarra, and 8 years in Iraq. Ayatollah Ha'iri with Ayatollah Murtaza Ha'iri, his elder son, and Ayatollah Muhammad Taqi Khansari arrived home upon the invitation of the people. Swarms of people welcomed him, hosted him, arranged many programs to benefit from his presence. The leading ulama, businessmen and all notable figures requested him to settle in Qum. Ayatullah Bafqi, one of the noble ulama, sincere servants of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, regarding whom Imam Khomeini rahmatullahi alayhi in many of his akhlaq lessons used to say, one who wants to meet a mu'min after the ziyarat of Abdul Azim alayhi salam pay a visit to Mujahid Bafqi's grave. That very alim who was laid in the shrine of Hazrat Fatima Ma'suma alayha salam and beaten by Raza Shah's thick baton. He called Ya Sahib al Zaman, help me, as he was beaten. He was exiled to Shahrire, where he died. Ayatullah Gulpaigani reports this amazing incident. Says there were 400 students during the time of Ayatullah Ha'iri in Qum. They all came to Ayatullah Bafqi and requested a winter Abba from him. He was the distributor of Ayatullah Ha'iri's scholarship. He reports to Ayatullah Ha'iri. Ayatullah Ha'iri says, from where? Ayatullah Bafqi says from Hazrat Waliy Asr Imam Zaman alayhi salam. Shaykh Bafqi says, Insha'Allah I will get them from him. The eve of Friday he sets off for Masjid Jamkaram, meets the Imam alayhi salam, comes and reports to Ayatullah Ha'iri on Friday that Imam has promised to provide 400 winter abbas on Saturday. The promise was fulfilled. With this yaqeen certainty, Ayatollah Bafqi returned from the Atibbat, Iraq, to convince the ulama in Qum to revive the Hausa. We have no support, they said. He replied, a hundred kilometers from Qum, Ayatollah Ha'iri is there, in greatness, in knowledge, in caliber, has no one like him in Iran, trusted by the greatest of Maraja of Najaf. In one of his meetings with Ayatollah Ha'iri, Ayatollah Bafqi says, Reports of the end of time reveal that knowledge will reach all corners of the universe from Qum. Do you accept them or do you doubt? Ayatullah Ha'iri replied, I accept them. Ayatullah Bafqi said, Don't you want this to happen by you, so that its eternal reward is registered for you? Ayatullah Ha'iri said, Why not? Shaykh Bafqi continued, Then why do you doubt settling in Qom? Ayatullah Ha'iri replied, A budget is required. Shaykh Bafqi said, No living exists but that is provided by God. Ma min dabbatin fil ardh illa ala Allahi rizqaha. Ayatullah Ha'iri replies, God provides through the means and channels. Shaykh Bafqi says, God creates the means his servant intends and he will avail. Ayatullah Ha'iri says, in Iraq there is a large group, I am preoccupied with them. Shaykh Bafqi says, relocating them is simple. Ayatullah Ha'iri agrees if the istikhara to move to Qum was good. An amazing ayah was revealed in the istikhara. It said, وَأْتُونِي بِأَهْلِكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ 
and come to me with all your families. People were informed of the outcome of the istikhara. He started the work on the establishment of the Hawza and asked his students and associates from Iraq to join him. The existing madrasas were refurbished. Students, teachers, syllabus were all examined and organized. A sincere foundation was laid nine decades ago, productivity and barakat of which just grows by many folds. Hawza al miya of Qum was established in 1923, an era when Iran was heading towards destruction. It was at this time he was given the title Ayatollah Mu'assis, meaning the founder Ayatollah. Ayatollah Mu'assis, the founder Ayatollah, had made it mandatory that every student sits an exam prior to his enrollment in the Hawza. He interviewed and issued a certificate for those students capable to propagate and perform tabligh. Ayatollah Ha'iri students numbered 600 and today this glorious Hausa caters more than 50,000 students from more than 50 countries from across the globe. Teaching fiqh, law, irfan, philosophy, economy, tafsir, kalam and many other subjects. It was Imam Khomeini rahmatullahi alayhi from the first batch of his immediate students who rose and with his great universal divine uprising which gave honor to the Shias, life to the Muslims and support to every oppressed. Since its inception, this Hausa has been the most supreme Islamic thought center. Nationwide Hausas were revived by the arrival of Ayatollah Ha'iri laying the foundation of the Hausa al miya of Qom and by seconding the best of ulama. In, in addition to his tiresome daily tasks and affairs, Ayatollah Ha'iri has left behind many written works. Kitab al-Salat, a very comprehensive book related to prayers. Durarul Usul, notes of his Ustad Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Fisharaki. Many other works include inheritance, nursing, wedding, divorce, marriage, manasik hajj, etc. Zakhiratul Ma'ad and Muntakhabur Rasail. Regarding his simplicity and humbleness, Imam Khomeini says, We are proud to admit that when Marhum Ha Shaykh Abdul Karim Ha'iri died, his children had no dinner that night. Are we spongers? or those who have hoarded their foreign accounts with public funds and yet do not stay away from looting the nation, not spongers. The main aim of the agents of imperialists was to dominate and control the Hausa il -Miyya. This was the greatest challenge for Ayatollah Ha'iri, who was the founder and the controller of this great institution. He remained alert to this challenge at all times. Since he was aware of the faithlessness of Raza Khan, he was facing his adventurous nature with courage and caution. As was expected, Raza Khan attacked Qum, making a false claim that his family was ridiculed at the Hausa. To celebrate the new year, people gather in sacred shrines and holy places. Among the visitors were also the members of the Pahlavi family who had appeared dressed in western apparel, not observing the hijab. People from all corners of the shrine started protesting against them. Ayatullah Muhammad Taqi Bafqi, the Mujahid Mu'min, sent a message to the royal family to cover themselves. When this message had no effect on the royal family, Sheikh Muhammad Taqi Bafqi went personally and requested them to cover their faces and heads and leave the site. There was a loud commotion and the Pahlavi family went away. Reza Shah was informed. He with a contingent of armed men arrived at the sacred shrine. Entered the sacred shrine with his boots. He ill-treated many students of the Hausa, kicked and beat them up. Ayatollah Muhammad Taqi Baqi was beaten, arrested and exiled. 
Often Ayatollah Ha'iri used to visit the madrasas to assess and gauge the progress of the bright students. He also used to inquire about their financial needs and arranged funds to help them. Many a times it happened that he visited the groceries in the vicinity of the shrine and took provisions on loan to be distributed to the students. Of all the traits of Ayatollah Ha'iri, his piety was the most prominent. His piety and simplicity was exemplary throughout his life. He always humbly expressed his gratefulness to Allah and whatever little he earned was distributed to the needy. Once a person presented an expensive Aba to his son. When he heard about this, Ayatollah Ha'iri told to him, This Aba is too expensive for you. Sell it by three less expensive Abas. Use one for yourself and give the other two to those in need. Sheikh's grace towards an old man. One very cold winter night it had snowed heavily. The door knocked. Karbalai Ali Shah opened the door. An old lady at the door. I am your neighbor. My husband is dying of severe stomachache. I have no medication nor any firewood to keep him warm. Karbalai Ali Shah, Sheikh's Khadim, abruptly said, Is this a chemist or a timber store that you've knocked at this time of the night? You won't find all this here. Come in the morning and he closed the door. He came to his room and saw Sheikh standing before him. His looks were not the same. He inquired, Who were you talking to? The Khadim reported, Sheikh was upset. He said, if tomorrow God asks me, you were warm and cozy. Someone ill and in need extended his hands for help. Why did you not help him? What answer do I have? I will be devastated and lost. Karbalai lowered his head in shame. Sheikh said, do you know her address? He said, yes. Sheikh quickly got dressed and said, right now we will have to go to her house and set off. The Khadim took the lamp and walked before the Sheikh. Both old men reached the old lady's house. Knocked, she opened, wished them salam, prayed for his long life. At this time and in this cold here, Sheikh said, how is your husband? The old lady burst into tears. Heart Sheikh shook. Under his lips, he murmured a recital. And then an old weak man lay ill. Sheikh wished him salam and sat before him. The old lady said, See who has come. Hard Sheikh Abdul Karim is at our house. His red eyes looked at Sheikh, wished him salam with all pain. Sheikh replied, He asked Mashhadi what's wrong. He pointed at his stomach. The lady said, Our room is cold. We have no medicine. He is complaining of the stomach ache from the past three days and today he has collapsed. Sheikh placed his kind hand on the man's forehead, then said to his khadim, Bring all the firewood from our house and go get the doctor quick. It was past midnight. They returned. The doctor wished Sheikh kissed his hand. The lady was happy. The Khadim gave the bag of firewood to the lady. She took and lit. The doctor examined and gave some medicine and a prescription to the Khadim to get the medicines in the morning. The doctor left. Sheikh, with all kindness, kissed the man's forehead, greeted the two and returned. On their way home, Sheikh asked the Khadim, how much do we spend daily on our grocery? Khadim replied. Sheikh then said, From tomorrow whatsoever grocery you will buy for us, half of it will be given to the old lady and half for our household and continued with their way home. Reza Shah Pahlavi, an illiterate, ill-mannered, ruthless hypocrite who worked as a security guard for one of the European embassies in Tehran was promoted 
and made the Shah of Iran by the British. The era of Sheikh was not easy, with Shah and his atrocities against Islam and the Muslims. In reply to Sheikh's telegraph, the Shah in person visited Sheikh, entered his house with his boots on, warned him to correct his behavior towards the kingdom, or else he would level everything in Qom with the ground. Soon after the mass massacre in Masjid Gohar Shad in Mashhad, and then the law abandoning hijab in public was passed and forced. Ulama were not allowed to wear their attire. Congregations, Husseiniyas, mosques and majalis were banned. Ayatollah Ha'iri fell ill with cardiac concerns. Students in large numbers were arrested. A group of ulama went to visit him to get his verdict on how to handle the affairs. To send the students to their hometowns, shut down the Hausa so as to be safe or to be moved to another location. Upon getting the updates of the oppressions, Ayatollah Ha'iri fainted. He recovered after a while and said, Under no circumstances must this trench be abandoned. This zulm, this oppression will vanish. You will remain. Today our custodian is Imam Zaman alayhi salam. Upon you is to strengthen your bond with him. He then instructed the students to not congregate, participate in funerals in more than three or four in number. Be away from sights as much as it is possible. When he was delivering his stock, he sighed, Ah, Islam is going. We have to save it. The companions of Sayyid al-Shuhada knew that they will be martyred on the day of Ashura. But they said, We must fight as much as we can, engage this army of Kufa as much as we can, so that the Imam, the argument, the Hujjah of Allah lives an hour longer. We do have a similar duty. My masters, Agayon, Islam is in danger. We, by our education, have to do something that Islam lives longer. Ayatullah Shaykh Abdul Karim Ha'iri was very patient in safeguarding the Hausa. Once Reza Shah said, I killed many of the ulama, but this one man Ha'iri, had I removed him, I would have removed Islam. Regarding his piety, Imam Khomeini says, My respected and honorable mentor, Shaykh Abdul Karim Ha'iri Yazdi, his seerah, his way, was in line with the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Ayatullah Ha'iri had excessive love towards the Ahlul Bayt Alayhim salam Shaykh Ibrahim Sahib Zamani was asked to recite Masaib daily prior to his lecture. When inquired, he said, When I was living in Iraq, it was a Wednesday. I had a dream that three days from now, I will die. I woke up, said to myself, it was just a dream, continued with my activities according to my schedule. The third day, with a group of friends, we had an outing. I started shaking, followed by severe fever. My health was deteriorating. I was reminded of my dream, asked my friends to take me home. I was laid facing the Qibla. I saw two angels have come to collect me. There I sought help from Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, pleaded to him, Ya Aba Abdullah, death I do not fear. My worry is because my hands are empty. I have nothing to present. By your mother Zahra alayha salam, allow me to live a bit longer so that I could serve. A third angel then appears, saying that Imam Hussein alayhi salam has mediated and the Almighty Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has accepted. They went, my senses were returned. I heard everyone crying around me. I shook. They opened my tied feet. 
they opened my eyes. The cotton stuffed in my mouth was removed. I sat very tired, thirsty. For fifteen days I was very ill and weak. All I possess is from Imam Hussein alayhi salam. That is why the Masaib of Abba Abdullah and Hussein alayhi salam are recited prior to the dars every day. On the 9th and 10th of Muharram, he participated in the processions of Azar, bare feet with dust and clay wiped on his forehead and his hanak around his neck. <laughs> السلام عليك يا رحمة الله الواسع ويا باب نجاة الأمة حسن جانب حسن جانب In the last days of his life, his frail health he selected a panel of three senior ulama, Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Kuh Kamari, Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Taqi Khansari, and Ayatollah Sayyid Sadruddin Sadr to function as his successors and handed over the Hawza al of Qum to them. In the same year, on 17 Dhul Qa'ad, 1355 after Hijra, 1936 AD, he passed away, plunging the people of Qom and worldwide Shias into deep sorrow. Since the oppressive regime was scared of huge public gatherings, they allowed only two hours, after which people were forced to disperse. He was laid to rest in the sacred shrine of Fatima Ma'suma salam, at Qom, the place where he conducted his lectures and offered his prayers. In his funeral, despite public gatherings being banned, hijab in public not allowed, all women participated in complete hijab. Qom witnessed a congregation of more than 40,000 people never seen before. Wasalamun alayhi yawma walid, wa yawma yamut, wa yawma yubasu hayya. And salam be on him on the day he was born and on the day he dies, and on the day he is raised to life. Wa subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil